G'day mates, Issa here and welcome to the Season 1 Review. For this video, I am going to be talking about Season 1, hence the title. And before I begin, I have tried to reach out to you guys which videos you want to see on my channel. And I have tried DAs before, but it's not very reliable at this point. And... Then I decided to try Twitter, and I got somewhat of response. And before the timer runs out for the vote, can you please check out my Twitter and then vote so I can see if you guys are interested in any of the videos I suggested for you. And now let's get started with this video. We first were introduced to all the main six. And it's got a lot and a lot of positivity which makes the fandom today. And that is the beginning of Bronies. I adore this generation so much. If you guys never actually know me that well, well, most of you anyway, I've been a fan of MLP ever since Generation 1. It was so amazing to see. Writers were able to recreate a classic and turn it into a somewhat a pop culture experience for all ages. It's so unexpected and I fell in love with it. And it's a great introduction to Tara Strong's character, Twilight Sparkle. I love Twilight Sparkle so much I can relate almost a lot about her besides I have troubles with friends and I have no self-esteem whatsoever a lot. I think that's a little bit more Fluttershy behalf, but enough further ado, let's continue. The first episode, Friendship is Magic, of course, the show is called Friendship is Magic, it was an interesting episode. It begins the Bronesney movement because of Nightmare Moon, our first villain. Dun dun dun! But honestly, I like Luna after finding out that she have a reason for being evil, which I am not disappointed of. I was drawn mostly because of positive reviews from analysis, and as I am a fan of MLP in the past, which includes Generation 1, Generation 2, Generation 3, and Generation 3.5. Yeah, I'm one of those people. But I'm not a big fan of newborn cuties, that's for sure. That thing gave me nightmares! For this reason alone, this season was the beginning mark of the bronies, which makes the movement more eased. I wasn't expecting a children's show to be appealing to... Um, I don't know, adults, which made it very complicated for me. And after reviewing all of that, I'm going to be listing my top 10 favorite season 1 episodes. These are only personal opinions and personal opinion only. If you have a favorite episode from this season, please leave it down in the comments. I'd like to see what you think about your favorite episode. And if you want to see more top 10s in the future, please leave a like. Okay, let's get on with the top 10. Number 10. Look before you sleep. This is the first Rarer Jack episode, which also started the Rarer Jack shipping. This is a conflict episode. Mixed feelings aside, this has to be the most relatable episode I could ever think of. I did think of sleepovers to be really girly, but yet again, I don't have really girly friends around me. It is, however, a very complex episode. It shows the difference between the farm pony that we know as Applejack and the fragrant unicorn that is Rarity. It's not only a lesson that both of them have to learn, it's also Twilight. Twilight has learned from this experience about this sleepover that everyone have a different opinion about everything. Remind me of a lot of the Brony analysis community. Is that right, Mad Munchkin? Lightning Bliss, Dr. Wolf. Number nine, Apple Buck season. It's complicated to say that when Applejack gets into the spotlight. She comes up a little bit more, well, how do I put this softly? Um, a bit of an airhead 
and strong spirited. This episode was Applejack's best. Not only we get to see the flaws of Applejack as both a fun pony and some what an element of honesty which is in play, we found out that Applejack still needs help. This episode was taught that we can't just do a lot of things on our own because people need more help than they thought. It's pretty sad to see Applejack burn out like that. I can think of a few people in my life who burn out so much due to a lot of paperwork. Yeah, not gonna touch on that. Pretty sad episode, but yeah, in the end, Applejack learned that help is always in reach. You just have to learn to reach out to it and not just let it hold back. Number 8, Call of the Cutie. This was the first CMC episode. This first episode started out with Apple Bloom trying to find her own talent. Well, it's easier to say enough until spoilers. This had been complicated for Apple Bloom trying to find her purpose in life. But instead, we get a lot and a lot of mixed feelings from her. She's trying to find a cutie mark now before Diamond Tiara calls her out for her cute Yara. And later, she found out that she's not the only one who don't have a cutie mark. We have now met Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo. Those two characters were in Generation 3.5. It's very complicated to say what's good or bad about this episode, other than why would Apple Bloom a really big deal about cutie marks, even though she's not going to get one early. It's like having your first tooth. You don't expect it to come out anytime soon once you were born. You gotta wait till you're old enough to actually get your first tooth, like a year or so. This actually shows that friends came in all shapes and sizes and cutie marks, whether with or without. This episode just took swinging. Number 7, The Cutie Mark Chronicles. It's another CNC episode and it takes place yet again in Ponyville. The CMC were trying to find out the backstory from the main six, finding out they all got their cutie marks because of Rainbow Dash's Sonic Rainbow. It's kind of a really predictable episode, but I did not expect any of them getting their cutie marks due to Rainbow Dash's Rainbow. I remember Rainbow Dash when she's like the rarity type in Generation Three. Yet again, the writers. This has shown that they are meant to be together, and it's beautiful. I love it. It's more than just about you know coincidence that bring people together. It's fate, and that's what the CMC have learned. Number six. Party of One. Yay! A Pinkie Pie episode! Yay! All the Pinkie Pie fans go wild! Don't get me wrong, I love Pinkie Pie. I love her personality. But yet again, her personality can come from one extreme to another. Example this episode. She had a little bit of epiphany that her friends abandoned her because they don't like her parties. So... Yeah, they tried to avoid her as possible, finding out they were planning a surprise birthday party for Pinkie Pie. What? Really? You got, you got a cave full of peep preferences, and you're saying that you forgot your own birthday. But yet again, that's Pinkie, who, you know, don't have a lot on her plate, and more focus on other ponies. This was an interesting episode, but yet again, it does have its few flaws. Pinkie Pie has scared me a little bit when I see her with a griffin called Gilda. 
we all know how that turns out. But later, we see that Pinkie Pie have more than just party flaws. She also have emotional flaws. She go from one extreme to another without even thinking. And due to her passive aggression, it shows that she is not all that perfect but still learning. Number 5. Best Night Ever Where do I start with this? It's the final episode of the season. I would have easily put this at number 1 along with Friendship is Magic. But, um, stuff have come up. Best Night Ever had the gala. It's a beautiful episode, but with its few flaws. We notice that the main six were trying to make it the best night ever like their dream. But, reality check, not everything had to go as planned. So they had to try to bring it up on themselves to make it the best night ever. And oh boy, did it end badly. But yet they stop out the donut shop where Spike is and later found out it was the best night ever. It also shows that not all parties have to be all balloons, party cannons, and Pinkie Pie in this episode. It's mostly all about trying to act sophisticated and, you know, ballrooms. I was a little curious of what the gala would be until this episode arrived. And now, I don't regret going back and watching it. The song is catchy, Princess Celestia was at her best, and everything else went smoothly. Except for Fluttershy anger management issues, Rainbow Dash nearly broke down the dance floor, Buried the obsession of trying to make the love of her dreams love her, Applejack trying to get Ponies to eat her delicious sweets, and Pinkie Pie making it like. <sighs> Number four, suited for success. A rarity episode indeed. Rarity makes dresses all the time, and a lot of clothing, so there's no surprise why this entitles to her. After she found out that the other main five don't have dresses for themselves or their dresses are not that perfect, she decided to bring it on herself to remake the dresses for them. But the main six have their own criticism about her design. And oh boy did they mess up big time. Verdi made the dresses like they asked. But they're not really great than the ones that Rarity made. They're not fashion designers, nor are they, you know, experts of fashion. They made their own dresses look like something that Lady Gaga or Madonna would wear. It's surprisingly enough, this episode was almost heartbreaking. We now see the process of Rarity trying to make things work out for her and her friends in this episode. It's heartbreaking to watch, knowing that Rarity gone through all of that through materials and materials and accessories for her friends and ended up making them all over again but in their preference. They're sickening to watch, and I have my hand on my face during the fashion runway. But they did make it up to in the end. Rarity now got the dress of her dreams because it had now been stitched by her friends. And at the end, it was a pretty well-earned episode. And I would go back and watch this. This is most related to not only fashion designers in general, but some leading experts. Number 3. Bridal Gossip Azakara Episode! Yeah! Oh wait, that is about other stuff too. 
When I heard of bridal gossip, I thought it was, you know, about some pony spreading gossip around Ponyville. That sounds like what the CMC have done. But instead, it's about some pony who entered Ponyville, but yet was given a wrong impression. And she happened to be a zebra. And many that don't know zebras, like either of you too young to know what the difference. Zebras are from Africa, descendant of various of animals, which were believed to be a white horse with stripes, but yet a very weird appearance upon their manes and tails. There's been an argument that Sakura might not be, you know, a pony per se, but a non-pony OC that been put into the show. But I did say one thing. The car is a pony. The end. Yeah, overall, it was predictable from the start. If you don't know me, I don't mind predictable episodes as long as they get done. This predictable episode, however, was the best example. Apple Bloom was able to make a friend without getting scared. Other than her friends, she now learned how to use potions in the near future. And later that day, the Korra now became wanted in Ponyville again, no longer been afraid by any other ponies. Number 2. Friendship is Magic I did say I was going to put this at number 1, but this was the beginning episode. It's also the introduction of not only Twilight, it's also the introduction of her friends and now fan favorite Derpy Hoops. Throughout this episode, well, two part episodes, I have a slight headache. Well, I had a slight headache watching this because it's painful to see Pinky until I actually saw something that made me laugh about Pinky. It was. The trees. Yeah, I laughed so hard when Pinky laughed at the trees. It's just so, it's so funny. <laughs> and that what makes me like Pinky even more. It's also proved which roles in MLP universe these ponies will take. Of course, none of them followed their elements as well as others. But it proves they're still learning about their element a lot more frequently. Best first episode, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Great introduction for both Nightmare Moon, Luna, and Celestia. Number one. Oh, you guys are ready? It's the Ticketmaster. I love the Ticketmaster. It's about Twilight getting two tickets for the gala, one for her and one preferably with a pony of her choice. I would have gone with Spike, but Spike keeps saying that he doesn't want to go. Throughout this episode, her friends were arguing, fighting, and even trying to knuckle others down so they can go to the gala themselves. They do try to convince Twilight that they are the ones they needed. From my perspective, it's relatable. Don't get me wrong, I have two other friends other than my editor. My editor has been around for me for longer than my last two friends I had. They both argued who would get me after they're no longer friends anymore. Of course, this started an argument and we're later not being friends anymore. All three of us together. This conflict has gone on and on and on, and it's so painful to watch. It's almost the same thing that happened to me long ago, and I didn't thought that this episode is kind of relatable to me. MB became a part of my friendship, just like Twilight and her friends. This episode gone off a really rocky start. It was painful to see Twilight struggle. 
But at the end, Twilight decided to give up her two tickets and give it back to Princess Celestia. Because she decided if her friends don't go, she won't go. And she's been given six tickets back. Plus Spike. Spike was really happy. Well, this is what I think about Season 1 and my top 10 favorite episodes from Season 1. If you want me to review the second season, please let me know in the comments. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you for MB for being my closest friend for a very long period of time. Longer than any other friend I have. And editing for this video. I'm looking forward to you all and I'll see you all next time. Stay 150 my friends.